What is up, lads, and welcome to another episode of the Pez Universe podcast. My name is The Midnight Kid, of course, and tonight, a little something different. We've uh, been joined here, again, you can see Wes is not with me. Wes is just, I think he's retired from Pez playing it and retired from the commentary now and retired from the podcast. So shout out to Wes, we are missing you, but hopefully you'll be back soon. But I am joined by two, another two legends of the Pez community um, of, you know, we've got Chris Davies of Evil Web and we have got Shales from... I'm going to say Shales of Pez United, really. That's what I'm going to call you and the Collector Shales. Okay, so that, That's what a lot of people call that, you. Yeah. Uh, Carrasco <laughs> calls you the Collector Guy. The Collector Guy, yeah. So Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, evil one. Yeah, but obviously, Chris, I mean, Evil Web is one of the biggest, you know, forums uh, still going. Um, so it's great that you're here just to kind of come on and get a feel of what the what the guys are thinking, what they're saying. Um, because obviously we are in a bit of a... You know, we were just saying it before the podcast there. I mean, there's only so much we can talk about before we start repeating myself or repeating ourselves of, you know, the state of eFootball, of the current state it's in and, you know, the bill that's up at the moment. Um, so tonight we are going to kind of switch it up a, a little and talk about maybe the future of what could come. You know, is there potential there? Is it dead on arrival? Um, you know, what is the future going to hold for eFootball? And then maybe go into touch on a little bit of UFL and goals and just generally have a chit chat about Pez and maybe touch on, you know, what were the old Pez games all about? Like, why were they so good? Even though they were limited now compared to games, you know, out coming out at the moment with the brilliant graphics and the 360 uh, control and all that. What was it about the old games that, you know, guys like you are still going back um, and trying out, you know, to get your, to get your fixes as we were saying before the podcast uh, started. So, yeah, thanks for joining me, boys. This is a bit of a long intro, but um, thanks for joining me. Um, and apologies about the delay. This is the second podcast in a row now where I've like been a diva and delayed the podcast. So <laughs> I do apologize for that. But yeah, I mean, Chris, we will start with you, man. Um, I mean, obviously with Evo Web, you know, like a massive forum, you know, some unbelievable uh, mods and, you know, great guys there that... I think really are passionate like they are probably you know like I know there's a few forums knocking about obviously and no disrespect to any of them but Evo Wave is probably you know the biggest one now in terms of activity user activity and you know reg regular posts and stuff um, and obviously you've got all like you know different sections and stuff for the mods and that but they, you do have a passionate fan base um, let's just just let's just say that and that you know you are going to have different views different uh, ways of you know thinking about the game and stuff so just give me a roundup of what you're seeing like what are you seeing like what are you kind of what's the feel at Evo Web of what's released and what eFootball is at the moment I think it's just almost an acceptance I think we saw a lot of traffic came in probably the most traffic that we've seen for a while mm. and we, we see obviously with every new release you see a lot of traffic come through but with the announcement that the game was going to be free to play I think yeah. it's a over a year ago now, it was just a, an influx of kind of, you know, RIP pairs and lots of people talking about their memories of the game. And it was it was a really odd one in that it was somber, but also people talking about what brought them to the series and mm. you know, some of the, the happiest childhood memories that, that we had. It's why I still, you know, log on to Evo Web every yeah. day, why I'm still there, why I still read all the posts. And it's it's an odd one because I think I did um, a podcast with the Footy United guys a little while ago, you know, uh, Brian and, mm. uh, yeah, all, all those guys. And we were talking about the fact that it almost felt like, from my point of view, I mean, I'm not, not speaking for the whole of Evo Web here, because obviously we have so many mods and mm. things and people who still play the game religiously. And guys like the Knight, who, you know, honour us with his presence every now and then, yeah. with his, his, the videos he puts together, how great you can get the game looking, yeah. how great some of the physics are in there. But my personal opinion of it has been that Pez has been on a kind of a a bit of a life support machine for a while now in that it's not getting the development kind of uh, funding that it needs from mm. Konami as a kind of a wider group and that it's it's stagnated a little bit in terms of the gameplay. Not that it's been terrible, but not that it's been groundbreaking. And we had this two year break and the promise of something that was going to be you know, really special made for next gen consoles and... Yeah, you know, I think a lot of us were thinking of the days where we we got ISS Pro Evo two and started advancing from there, and then mm. got PES three and four and five, thinking, "Oh my God, this is just getting better and better all the time," and some kind of a return to the glory days. And 
what we've got is that that kind of life support machine that Pez is on as soon as we got that free to play announcement it was like that's it now it's turned mm. off kind of thing <laughs> uh, and this demo that we've that we've got which you have to call it a, a demo it's what mm. I know um, Adam Adam Batty on uh, Evo uh, on Evo on Twitter has, has referred to it as um, I think there's a lot of people who are dragging the corpse of it out onto a pitch and going it's still playable and it will be uh, you know as we said before we started recording there will be a point in maybe a year's time or mm. two years time where it starts to get more advanced and starts to get built on but if it's taking two years to get to the point that we're at now how much longer is it going to take? you know a, a patch in a month's time or two months time isn't going to make it mm. a suddenly much more playable game when there are so many kind of basic elements that are just not working at the moment in a, is another two years going to be enough mm. is it still going to be going at that point but yeah, I think Evo Web's kind of general view is is just disappointment that this new audience, this mobile audience, is what's being catered for you mm. know, uh, ahead of what we would rather you know like to see you know the old hardcore guys, and um, just kind of bewilderment really. But there are guys that that's not to say that there aren't guys <clears> who <throat> see positives in there and think that there is something you know there's a light at the end of the tunnel. Um, I I have to say i don't agree with those guys uh, but i can sympathize because of the fact that they're looking at they can see elements of, of physics and elements of ai where they're saying if they, they just improve this a little bit then it'll be much better but to me it will be at best as good as pes 2021 mm. so why not just play pes 2021 now <laughs> yeah and with more what will football yeah. become mm. yeah it's it, yeah i mean it is it is it is a yeah it's a difficult one I think it's a difficult one. I think, I think depending on like whether you think the base is worth anything or not, I think that's kind of like, you know, because if the base, and I said that when I played the early play test, like I could see how some people wouldn't have liked that even. No, I, I, I did. I liked it. I thought it was very good. It's a lot better than what released, but I can, st I could still see the stuff that needed work on, um, you know, and I think that that I think the biggest thing with a lot of people is the direction that they've gone with of, you know, some would say that they've kind of made everything very basic and minimalistic, um, you know, right down to the menus, you know, where it's kind of like very simplistic. There's not really much going on from a graphical point of view. And then when you get onto the pitch from what we have at the moment, it is very bare bones. Like, you know, you've got what, nine teams, a couple of teams online you can play with in events. Like, it's not, it's not Pez anymore, definitely not. It's definitely something new. But, like, I mean, what about you, Shez? Like, are you, do you share that kind of pessimism or optimism? Or, like, what, like what, are, you, what are you thinking in terms of the core game, as in, like... Um, well, I guess to sum up where I am with it at the moment is I've not played it yet. So mm. it's... Um, I kind of saw the release and what we got so far through the eyes of everyone else and what, you know, what has emerged on, on social media mm. and things like that. Mean so, um, um, I remember like the, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't desperate to play it right away anyway, but mm. if the demo had released, not at say 1am on, um, whichever day it came out, if it was say, in the day or early evening, I probably would have played it on the first day. Yeah. But I thought, you know, it didn't have my interest enough for me to stay up to 1 a.m. and think, right, it was, what was it, like a Sunday night or something? Nice and I thought, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, sure. yeah, I'm not going to download it now and, and get, you know, get a couple of hours in. And then by the time I woke up and kind of checked social media, it was like, you know, I'm probably going to stay away from this for a little while, mm. but at least until things settle down. Um, there was a lot of promise hearing the stuff from you guys from when you played the um when you played the test at Windsor. Um and that did raise my excitement quite a bit mm. for it. Obviously, you know, as usual, kind of getting carried away with myself with my expectations of it. <laughs> but you know, all manageable expectations, of course, because uh it's just the game and it you know it doesn't matter either way whether we play it or not, basically. But yeah, I guess you know, that's kind of where I am with it, is I've kind of seen it and it kind of hurts, you know, if I'm honest, like we've been playing these games for, well, was it 25 years yeah. or something like that? And it's as, as a series, it's, it's kind of grown and it's, 
you know literally become a part of my life from just those early days of just playing it with your mates just playing it hardcore to moving into the age of you know interacting with people outside of my you know friends network mm, through yeah. forums social medias <laughs> um to then even you know having the opportunity to to work and contribute on the game to be credited on the game for the last four or five games you know to kind of then what we get served up with the with the football with the with the launch and kind of what what we got it was you know just just kind of sad really got nothing mm. really else to add compared to what everyone else has kind of summed up but their, their feelings on it being like a you know like a veteran in the game or anything like that but okay. um i can understand why they've done it i don't i'm not mad at that i mean you know we're not owed anything they don't owe us a game mm. it's we've kind of been lucky you know we can let's say we can celebrate the last 25 years of 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 having this game in 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 our lives and all the stories that we kind of got with it so it's not the direction that's really bothered me it's more of the just what was served up on yeah. on that release day it was just you know it just yeah it, it it just hurt a little bit to be honest and it i think to go in and play in that would have you know it would have been pretty sad for it that way so it's like i'm happy to leave it for you know let's see what this first patch does that if i start hearing some good things from that then maybe i will um get a download in and get a couple of games in but other than that i'm probably okay with waiting until the first big release where mm. is it like mid-november or something like that but yeah <clears throat> kind of sum it up yeah it's um it's kind of not it's not grabbed my attention let's say to kind of give it a go yet so but i'm not ruling it out you know it's there's i can that being that's kind of glass half full kind of guy like i always am i'll I'm, I'll, I'll never rule it out. I don't think because um, I've still got that lure to play it because it's a it's a Konami football game. It, it's it's the it's the football game that I've been playing for like I said twenty five years. Mm. So the name change doesn't bother me. It's that's you know that isn't important. Um, the lure will still be there for at least a good couple of years of it being called e football before you know if, if it isn't for me then that will totally just I guess drift away eventually. But um i'm not ruling out i'll i'll give it a shot um it might be for me it might not be but um i'll have to actually play it and and kind of see see how it feels um it not it doesn't sound like it's necessarily what i'm after but it might well be you know mm. it, it, it it might surprise me it all depends on how it feels i think rather than kind of what it sounds like it will be so um i'm keen to give it a shot when i think it's it's you know decent enough to to spend a couple of hours on but mm. that's kind of where i am with it really so um yeah i think you sum um, up a lot of people that have like you know without calling you old i'm going to call you old like yeah, as in no, the older it, kind yeah. of the older <laughs> the older type of fan you know that have yeah that haven't really you know been gone on the the direction over the last couple of years of you know first mlo and then my mm -hmm. club you know you obviously can still have fun with the game mm. but you know i i still think that a lot of people that are uh, are you know of that vintage let's say um that have grown up you know playing pez back you know 20 25 years ago like i just feel like the game has kind of moved on in a way that like and i don't just think pez i just think that game in general i mean it's all online now like everything is online mm -hmm. it's driven about mm -hmm. keeping players engaged as much as possible player retention you know like every time you load up a game now that's smashing it content wise like you're nearly overwhelmed with like there isn't enough yeah. hours for like you know like such as fifa or nba 2k like you don't i don't scratch the surface no. of what you can do in those games you know it's too much like um but i do think that like the big the, the big debate i think is that like some people are just don't see any you know and chris you mentioned it there like a really good point of like i think that's kind of now that the initial the initial kind of, you know, disaster of a launch has like worn off a little bit and people are either moved on and are not moved on fully, but they're keeping an eye on things for future patches. But they're, you know, they're playing something else or else they're just taking a break or they're still playing PES 21 or they're going back playing PES 5 or 6 and, you know, doing all these things. Um, I do think that like it's now kind of settled down to like guys that are like, you know, happy to see, happy with the core of the game and see where it could actually go and, you know, say like, yeah, the graphics aren't 
amazing, but they will improve in six months' time. You know, the speed of the game isn't amazing, but it will improve, like, you know, and stuff like that. The bugs will be gotten rid of and all that. So, like, and then there's the other side of it where, like, this game is literally, like, un, you know, unsavable. Like, it's there's nothing to salvage from this. You know, it's it's just, you know, PES 2021 was way better. Like, we had Knight MD on the podcast last week, and he was saying, you know, that PES 2021 was one of his favorite games. Um, and a lot of people on Twitter today, when I put out a couple of tweets, they were like, oh, you know, give us a season update for PES 2022 and all this kind of stuff, you know? Um, so, I mean, like... For you, Chris, like, do you do you just think, like, based on what's, you know, there at the moment, release-wise, that was released on the September 30th, do you kind of get, do you have the opinion that this game is kind of, you know, it's not two or three patches away from improving? You know what I mean? As in, like, you know, because what we played at Windsor, like, it was a better version of the game. And I've gone over this, people will be sick of me, me saying it, you know? It wasn't a completely different game do you know what I mean it wasn't like I've said before it wasn't like it was a different developer making the game it was a very solid build of what we have out now minus the bugs minus all the glitches and the invisible players and the L2 wasn't broken you know the pace of the ball felt better there was more variety with the passing and the shooting but in it you know at its core like it was pretty much you know what I mean what we have seen with the with the release and the 20 uh or the 30 so like that's enough for people to kind of maybe check out and say, well, listen, you know, like, I've no doubt that there is a new build, a better build out there or a better version of the game out there where it's actually fixes a lot of the stuff that's, you know, people are complaining about at the moment. But that's still not enough for me. Like, I was, I say it's not good enough. Like, is that kind of where you're at with it, where you're like, no patch can save this ra- unless they like drastically change like a lot of the fundamentals? Oh, well, I think... <sighs> I almost I, I was gonna say I don't know who eFootball is is for. I, I but I think it's it's that mobile audience at its core. So for my my personal opinion on it is look that they've made eFootball and it's simplified as much as it is because it's for a lower powered platform that is being scaled across everything else. It's they've started again not to start from scratch and make something better, make a true sim from you know the ground up. That's not why they've started again, and that's not why it's in the state it's in. It's in the state it's in, and it's as basic as it is because it's being made to play across, you know, all of the different platforms. It's mm. they said their whole aim a year ago now, and the trailers that they released was this free-to-play cross-platform mobile versus PS5 type uh, gameplay. Yeah, and how far can you push the gameplay? if it needs to be playable on a mobile. And there are, mm. I've read people since saying, well, look, as they work on this game, then they could say, right, okay, well, for PS5, we'll add in these ex- these kinds of ball physics and we'll make it a little bit more advanced. Um, but I can't see that happening for when people on PS5 play PS5, when that's what the previous games were, that's what the previous development mm. plan was. They've scrapped that development structure and gone, we need a game across all of these platforms that's the same code base that's easy enough to update. Yes, the graphics can scale up when you're on a PS5 or an Xbox One, uh, sorry, an Xbox Series X or what have you, but the gameplay itself is so much more, I mean, the Knight has covered it far more eloquently than I'll be able to, but when he's talking about things like ball deflections, the kind of spin on the ball and Mm. the inertia being taken out of the Mm. ball isn't there now, that's not because it's in early stages or because it's buggy, that's because a mobile phone processor can't do that. And I know people don't like the kind of, when people repeat the, oh, it's a mobile game. It's, it's not a mobile game. And I get it's it's not, mm. it's more advanced than that, but it's going to be played on a mobile phone. Yeah, you can play it on mobile, yeah. It, it, exactly. And yes, it could get to a point where they start adding in specific gameplay elements that are, yeah, PS5 be PS5 only or whatever it might be, but I can't see that when the whole point of this, all of the trailers, all of the fanfare that they've been making for the last year, whatever we think of that, or you know whether we love it or hate it, it's been about that new development direction of mm. cross-platform play. So I can't see it. I can I can see it getting more fun, but I can't see it 
getting better. And um, what, what I, when I started saying I don't know who it's for, the guys who loved Pez 2021, I'll hold my hand up, I didn't. But the guys who loved that, and I, I certainly see why when I watch the Knight's videos, mm. <laughs> the, the amount of times I've watched one of his videos and gone, I'm going to give this another chance, <laughs> gone and played it, and then just felt stale and laggy and just like the the human players are too stiff and robotic and not as expressive as as you'd want them to be for a for a next gen game or even a last gen game um it, it's not for me but i can see that it is for a lot of people they're playing e-football and going this is a more basic version mm. the guys who didn't like it like like i didn't are playing this and going it's not being rebuilt to be a better game it's being rebuilt uh, rebuilt to be more compatible mm. across all these platforms with features taken out of it gameplay features not just game modes you know not just things like master league which i understand that that's a dying demographic as much as it pains me yeah um it's it's the gameplay elements of it that, are, that have had to be stripped back but the guys who it is made for are those mobile players and i don't know enough about that all i know about that is there are a hell of a lot of downloads in the, in that demographic. There's a hell of a lot of money to be made in that demographic. Mm. And I don't treat Konami as some kind of, uh, you know, Renaissance artist. I treat them as a business. They're looking at this as a business and going, it's cheaper to make stuff for them. They will lap it up the way that they've lapped previous mobile games up. That's who we need to, to please because it's cheaper to please them. And we're not going to, to make a dint on, on FIFA sales and uh, make a, a killing on next gen consoles, et cetera, like we will on mobile if we just focus, you know, double down on that and let everybody play together. That's clearly their strategy. And for the mobile guys, it'll work. But for, for guys like me, it, it doesn't. So you, you asked me, can I see it getting better? I can see the game improving, it becoming less buggy and it being more playable. Mm. But can I see me ever playing it? No, because at best, it's going to be a little bit worse than PES 2021 because of the restrictions that are in place because of all the cross-platform elements to it. So I, I need something revolutionary from them. And that's what I was hoping for when two years ago the announcement yeah. was, we're taking two years off to make this next-gen <clears throat> game. My hope was, this is it. It's the the FIFA killer and if not in terms of sales, just in terms of having more kind of organic animation and more of a, an AI that is based on real football instead of what works for online play. And as soon as they started talking about the kind of one versus one focus, which is yeah. all online plays about, then it was immediately apparent that, no, this this isn't for me. But I'm, I'm, I'm sure it's for some. Mm. Uh, but I just think that those people are more likely to be mobile players. Yeah. Yeah. No, it, it... Like all that you've said there are really good points because I think the the thing the thing that I've noticed in a lot of the a lot of the conversations I've had like with people that are like completely you know a variety of different people you know whether it's content guys whether it's kick guys whether it's just general you know followers on Twitter that have you know have no platform they just like to follow Pez news and stuff and they send the odd DM like I think the biggest thing that struck people was like. And I said this months ago, it was like, Konami were going out of their way to make this, like, a, not a PES game. You know what I mean? Like, they changed the name of the game. They changed the focus of the game in terms of, like, you know, they were talking about esports. They're talking about, like, 1v1, as you said, Chris. Like, you know, they're bringing in a dual camera to suit, you know, like, 1v1. Like, have it exciting if you had an esports event that you, you know, you can go in and you can see exactly how these guys, you know, play and how they control the players and stuff. And then... Like the biggest thing for me and, and the sh like I think I had processed that and I knew that it was going to like be a big departure from Pez because as you know, as soon as I heard it, there wasn't going to be Master League or Edit Mode at launch. Like I was like, well, you know, it's not Pez then. Like, you know, and I kind of started to process it. And I remember I've had a few phone calls with you, with you shells throughout the year mm -hmm. where I was kind of saying like, you know, I think people are going to be like i don't i don't think it's hit people yet as to like where they're departing to with the future and i think when the game came out yeah we can see all the memes and the funny faces and people you know players coming in with no heads before the games and all the bugs like they'll be fixed but i think what really hit people hard was like you know this is like so different yet familiar like in a way that like it's funny to me because you know when you talk about pez as much as edit mode and master league are like for the offline experience of maybe modes and stuff 
like player ID is probably like the biggest on pitch one. You know what I mean? And Knight was saying that last week is that that's what he missed the most um, of that. Like all the players run, you know, there's the same running animation, same running style for all the players. And like I instantly think back of that Cristiano Ronaldo trailer, like when it was like split between the, I think it was Pez 13, was it? Mm. It was split between like him as real, like, you know, in real life and then like back over and it looked like so good at the time. And I remember seeing that trailer and I just think that they've moved away from that to make it a more like, you know, uh, like a more easy, ex- easily accessible experience for people to actually play. And they've made no, you know, they've made no, they haven't tried to hide that. They've basically said, we want people to be playing this, you know, if you're on your mobile playing against somebody on the PS5. And then th- the thing that kind of confuses me, mm-hmm. and I'll throw this question to you as well, is that the thing that confuses me is that like they're working on some stuff that are only going to benefit guys with a PS5, right? Like they're putting time and resources in to doing stuff that only benefits PS5 users or next gen users, like the haptic feedback, you know, like some of the visuals, like we've seen this week, like some of the PC guys, I'm not too sure if you guys have seen, but the PC guys have actually been going in looking at some stuff and like some of the assets that are there and some of the screenshots that are actually there like look phenomenal do you know what i mean like they look so like good and it's like it's just not optimized and it's like you know why are they focusing on you know like chris it's kind of why i'd say to you is like why do you think they're focusing on that stuff like when everything is pointing towards them going in the direction that you're saying you know what i mean that's what kind of causes me to stop my tracks and think well you know is is like, is that the truth then, or are they actually trying to make a hybrid? Like, are they trying to do something that's never been done before, where you have a proper next-gen, you know, experience in six months' time or nine months' time, and then you come out with your Unreal Engine 5 Master League, like in, you know, August 2022, this time next year. And then if you want to play on mobile, it's just scaled down. Like, that to me, that I'm still kind of trying to process that, so, I'll, like, I'll put that question to you. I mean, Shales, I'll ask you because, you know, you've been mm. very patient and quiet there. Um, but, like, why Like, why do you think that is if, like, well, first of all, Shales, I mean, do you think, do you think, like, do you agree with Chris's opinion there that it is kind of like a more simplified version based on what you've seen, based on what, like, you're hearing? Um, or do you think that, like, all the stuff I'm saying with the haptic feedback and all that, do you think that that's just kind of a... I don't know what you'd call it, just like kind of a distraction, so to speak, that it's like, oh, these are next gen features, but it's like, yeah, you know, I think, yeah, certainly what we've been served up and what we've got at the moment is a very simplified version of whatever they're trying to do, whether mm-hmm. there is um, a massively ambitious project going on here, like you said, with all the assets that are in in the files, um, you know, that 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 French modder guy who's basically pulling it all apart his reveals have been kind of like the more exciting parts of, of the eFootball journey so far because there is some detailed stuff in there. Um, I got uh, crazily excited just because somebody had a little lanyard that said Menanda. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, just, you know, there's it made me kind of happy. At least there's somebody there somewhere who's done that and they've, and, and they've kind of put that in. It's like, you know, there's a kind of a little bit of legacy in there somewhere mm. so uh, you know maybe maybe they are like developing like this ambitious project and it's like we're gonna see if we can deliver that next gen and have it scaled down um that pop that you know that would be more exciting um certainly i don't know whether that's good or not knowing that this these things are in the files because some of it we might not ever see yeah. and that will be obviously a disappointment then mm. and i think that will then tell us that they are maybe trying to be too ambitious in in kind of building that, and if they are, then held back by by the lower end of of the tech, whether it be you know that being the mobile platform. Um, I don't know. I mean, we definitely have got a, a simplified game at the moment. Um, it is it's been kind of interesting because obviously the the first couple the first day was just you know negative city it was just Mm. like i said it was memes it was just the bugs and all that it took about i'd say four or five days on my timeline to see any sort of uh positivity come out from it 
whether that's people just having more time with the game or they're just getting more braver and releasing clips um, because they know they're just going to get torn to shreds from being, <laughs> you know, for sharing anything positive. But, you know, visuals is one thing. It's like, you know, back in the 90s, right, it's going to go back a long way. We would once upon a time buy games based on a visual because that's what we'd see in, in a magazine, right? Mm. You know, we didn't see... We didn't have any video of any games back then, but you know, as 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 good as as good as visual screenshots are, to me, it's not a game seller. It might have a lot of attention to to some people, but you know, it's all it all depends on 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 how it plays and how it flows. Um, certainly, it looks quite simple at the moment. Um, I have seen some nice stuff when people are showing some some nice dribbles, and I think we're seeing the. Uh, the good parts of of the one v one system that they're kind of bringing. So I don't know. I mean, maybe it's like um, I try and compare this to Arsenal. I apologise to everyone, but yeah. you know, for well, years it was like them. Arsenal. <laughs> Arsenal were always, you know, they were that one or two players away from you know challenging. It was like let's just get that DM, let's get that centre back in, then then Arsenal will be flying. But with like e football, it seems like you know they're kind of at the moment, like many players away from from kind of getting back to kind of where it needs to be. But mm. I guess to get back on topic, um, I don't know. I like like I said, I, I'm always that optimistic guy. Um, I like to think that there is an ambitious project on the go here, and it might take um, you know a year, eighteen months, or whatever to kind of get everything um, get everything going properly to start having these little. Um, you know, like niche bits of gameplay and and things like that, just some real in, just some real interesting parts to it, rather than just you know a a simplified things with kind of simple physics and and all that. But um, I don't know. It's 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 still it's it's still too early. Um, so I'm like I said, I'm I'm always on that optimistic side. Um, but obviously never getting ca- too carried away of it. But there might be something ambitious on 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 the go here. We're just kind of going to have to wait and see on it. But Mm. um you know like i said going back to my first point like kind of what we've seen so far it's not it doesn't have that much interest to me at this moment in time but yeah i'm kind of prepared and i'm willing to be surprised by something in the future but we'll see what we get Mm. no it's i think that's that's the overwhelming feeling i'm getting is that yeah there are some people definitely getting enjoyment out of it like i've talked to a few of the pro guys and you know they're enjoying like they're enjoying learning some of it and obviously like there is there is some positives there i mean i keep going back to what i played in windsor like uh, we i i wasn't blown away like i wasn't blown away by what i played in terms of like i came out and i was like oh my god it's the best game ever like you guys don't know what's going to hit you because it wasn't like that type of experience you know what i mean mm. and i think when we were doing the podcast last week with the guys like we did i did anyway personally speaking for myself like i went in with very low expectations because i wanted to be you know i was like i was looking for things that i normally wouldn't look for in an early version of the game um you know like obviously you like to remain critical and you like to remain balanced but like you know it is it is it is very hard in a situation where you know you've got five minute matches like you're kind of like you're you know you're stopping and the developers are coming over and talking to you and pointing things out and you're like yeah yeah go away i just want to play you know it's hard compared to sitting at home playing it yourself but like i do think that there is good promise in the game it's just that like it's just it's very hard at the moment i think for people to scratch away all that and Mm -hmm. see what's behind it because you know because of the bugs because of the broken mechanics because of stuff that just isn't good enough for a game to be out at the moment like you know in this day and age where it's like it's just not you know it's not at the races like you know i mean it's 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 easy to criticize it it's easy to put up a tweet or put up a video you know mocking it and laughing at it and stuff like that i definitely do think that there is potential there but i think this is the first year in a long time where you know it's very hard to go back at somebody that is you know like i mean chris you have so much ammunition that you could you could destroy me in an argument now because it's just made it so easy you know um 
uh, that it's so hard to get past the negatives this year. I think this is the first year, like last year, it was all about like, oh, it's a season update and they're selling five versions of iconic moments. And that was where the criticism was. Whereas this year, I think it's the actual, you know, the simplistic gameplay, like the direction, as you said, Chris, I think you've summed up exactly what most people that are unhappy with feel. Do you know what I mean? And that to me is going to be a harder hill to climb than having a couple of, you know, legend players or iconic moment players at launch. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's just a tough one. I mean, Chris, like for you, obviously, you know, we probably are on different sides of the, you know, two sides to the same coin, me and you, in terms of like, I'm probably still a little bit, well, I won't say a little bit, I am positive. I am, I am I'm, I'm, I'm a bit hopeful and optimistic for what the future holds. I don't think that it's a write-off what we're playing at the moment. I see flashes, like the stuff I played in Windsor, I saw flashes. I saw that there was like very good potential there, even with the limited stuff that was there. But for you, like saying that you're not, you know, it's probably not going to be for you. Like, I think the big thing that people don't realize is like, even if you're positive or negative, like, right? I think one thing that goes unnoticed for guys like us that do content or like in, in tune with the community is like people don't realize that like how much time we put into doing stuff. Do you know what I mean? And like even for you, I mean, like over on Evil Web and the guys posting there, you know, like disagreeing or agreeing with what they're saying, like it's is not the point. It's like they're still taking the time to go in and actually voice their opinion. Like it's easy to just for people to say like, oh, why don't you just, you know, like fuck off and not play it anymore and just be done with it like all you do is moan and it's like but like there's a, you know there's an investment in there that you're like you know i speak to people about pez in my spare time like i'm always you know involved some way talk to people doing podcasts like do you find that as well that it's like it's more of the it, it, like the, the community part of pez is like something that you still kind of hooks you in like is that kind of something that's keeping you here Oh, I mean, absolutely. When mm. you see the kind of what modders do who come along to Evo Web and they just turn the game into graphical kind of just art, it, it, it's incredible <laughs> what, what, what they can do. And when you see the passion behind it, even if I'm not downloading those mods, even if I'm looking at the Knights videos and going, that looks incredible, but the gameplay is not for me, mm. it's still to look at it, you see the passion that they have yeah. and the love that they have for the game and for the series. And you can't help but be overwhelmed by what a, this community does for the product and does from that just that pure love of, of, of the title. And yeah, I mean, I, I don't want to be pessimistic. And I think that Evo Web has a kind of a reputation of being a kind of uh, toxic negativity kind of um, view of things. And I, I think that the fact that we allow negativity and positivity, sometimes it, it just comes across as more of one than the other. And maybe that's because I know guys have come over from Reddit and said there are certain, that they can't criticize uh, certain things or be passionately against something or passionately dislike something about a game without feeling like their comments are, are removed, deleted or, or hidden. And at Evo Web, we try and basically whatever your feelings are about the game for as long as you're not being obviously, you know, insulting or you're not being, um, you're, you're just saying it's crap. I'm not going to tell you why it's just crap. <laughs> um, if you have substance to it, you're providing constructive criticism, then it's it's all because you know, we're playing the game and we're judging it and we're criticizing it because we're desperate to to love it mm. and we still we still buy it we still you know when the season update was announced and uh, it, it was announced it wasn't going to be a full release i think all of evo web i mean there will be a few who say they didn't but i think all of evo web went out and bought it because mm. they were all talking about it for for weeks afterwards and what they liked and what they didn't like and how they were surprised that the 2021 season update had gameplay updates and was a better game. Mm. So we go out and we buy the game and we talk about it. And even if we don't like it, we're still giving that money in the hope of, of something better in the long term. But it just feels like that kind of the focus on who they want to, to please. Uh, and that's entirely based on the money that they can make out of it. <laughs> has just moved yeah just just moved away but mm. um yeah as you say when you look at the community and you look at the passion that's there you, you can't help but kind of 
be really uh, proud of, of the community really because there are other communities out there who who love games and will uh, put mods together but not completely transform how it looks and how it plays and spend so much time fixing issue well, or maybe not fixing but but changing our parts of the game to maybe get more fouls awarded to maybe make the ai change things up a little bit or come up with little tips and tricks for setting up the AIs, the team strategies to, mm-hmm. to make it play more like yeah, a, which is huge, a real yeah. game of football or yeah, yeah, or, or flow better or, or whatever it might be. There's, there's just so much dedication in that community that I, I can't help but just feel crestfallen for the guys. I mean, that that was my first thought when the, the first reactions to, to eat football came in. And as you said, forget all of the the stupid memes and the stupid faces because if you look at the graphics on a ps5 if you you have a you look at freeze frames of, of faces on your own time on your own console it can look fantastic yeah. at times e-football I'm about, it look, looks really great at times so so forget all of that stuff and i mean i i'm with you shales i don't really care too much about the the graphical elements anyway i don't care how great it looks uh, it, it's all about that that the gameplay for me and I said to the night, you know, that the, I feel more kind of heartbroken and gutted for guys like the night who are so dedicated and who loved PES 2021 and was so excited for the future. And I was excited for the future, but mm. not as much as guys like him who dedicated so much time to it and, and just love it so much for them to be, as I think they would they would say and they feel, to be let down in that way and i i don't feel like that because as i said i have to look at it as a business and i understand why they're making these decisions i'm still gutted i, I can't help it because i still want to play pez because fifa will always be fifa and i'm enjoying it a little bit more this year but it's still at its core fifa and their focus will never be simulation the one hope that we've had in the market if you're a sim guy like me and that's what you want from the game has been pro evo mm. And that, that's no more. Now it's it's eFootball. And for me, there are just too many signposts that Konami are giving us that it, it's not, that's not the aim. It's not a simulation game. It is a, a PvP online focused, microtransaction focused type game. And mm. yeah, the mobile audience might love it. it. It always shocks me when you see the comments on Facebook, the guys who post screenshots of their teams where they're mm-hmm. all like, between 99 and 102 <laughs> overall kind of rating. You look at it and you think, I, I, I know nothing about this world. Mm. I'm in my my very small world over here in the kind of I wish this game was a sim world. And that that isn't what the, the market is now. Mm. And I just have to hold my hands up and say, maybe time to get a new hobby or join a <laughs> Sunday league team and you know, have a heart attack aged 37. <laughs> yeah, but it is, it is like... I always I always look at it with with uh with FIFA as you mentioned there like you know I I think FIFA is like it's very fun it's very playable you know exactly what you're getting when you go in you know when you get it it does what it says on the tin and I think the if you look at the direction that they've gone in terms of like I think the career mode guys and the offline guys that you know you mess around with the sliders and all that sort of stuff like that is big, but I would say it's probably the same ratio of Master League guys compared to my club now. That, yeah, you have like millions and millions and millions more playing, like tens of millions of people playing Ultimate Team, but you have millions playing my club. And then you have, you know, a ratio of maybe 10 is to one. You might have like a couple of hundred thousand playing Master League or playing offline modes. Like, you know, like we would have grown up playing like Master League after Master League season. Um, and I think that's just the way it's gone. But like, uh, I do, yeah, no, I do think, and one thing I've learned, especially, I think, you know, I like to, I, I kind of like to do a lot of thinking and stuff and from talking to different people. Like one thing I've learned from doing the podcast and getting feedback in is like, like I like, you know, and I've said this, like no one is above like being questioned and being called out on stuff. And like, you know, it's like, how, you know, how do you think that that is the way it is? Or like, what's your process here? Like, I think it's the same way as you can have somebody that's overly positive. It's very easy to kind of bat somebody away or just block and mute if they are negative about something that you don't believe in. You know what I mean? It works both ways. So I agree with you. If somebody's able to have a conversation and say, like, you know, listen, like, this is completely simplified, like, blah, 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 blah. Like, that's fine. But then at the same time, 
I think a lot of this going forward now is like you're going to be your own preference as to like what enjoyment you can get out of Pez for you. And I just think that like the core game at the moment isn't there. But I do agree like when Knight was on the other day and we were talking about it, like like Knight was kind of saying that that's why he was so like devastated that it was like, you know, there was there was it was so polarizing that like after Pez 2021, and as you said, and you know, me and you have spoken as well, Shales, like like I thought Pez 21 was very solid, like offline. Online is crazy. Like you have you can have good good days and bad days. Like, you know, my club is just crazy. But like offline, I thought it was very solid. You know, it was very playable. You could tweak a lot of the stuff with the stats, the formations, the fluid formations. There was a lot of stuff there that you could tweak. And that's not even getting into like the mods and you know the the work that those geniuses do. But like to me, it just feels like there's there's there is there is a i think this is the first year and i said it before and i'm repeating myself now but there is a, i think there's definitely two different roads now going forward rather than before people were kind of like as you said chris you know people might have complained and they might have talked but they'd still come september they were still checking out the game whereas now i think that there is definitely uh there is kind of a, a you know a, div- a diverging road should we say that it's like some people might never get back on the pez the pez road now because they'll say like look we 25 years of pez it had some highs and lows e-football is its own entity now just let it go it's not for me um i still think we're kind of tied into the community in some way that it would be very hard to kind of go cold turkey even though we say we would and you know we like a break here and there like that to me is what's kept me in it for so long is like meeting people that I would never have met before having relationships and friendships with people that I never would have had before, you know? And it's like, that to me is what my biggest memory have of it has been and my biggest takeaway. But uh, I don't know, man, like it's, uh, we, we keep doing these podcasts and we keep talking about the, the similar things and everyone that we, you know, every one of you guys have the same thoughts, you know, and it seems to be an overwhelming thing of, where do we go from here? Like, is there any hope for guys such as yourself, Chris, that just wants a decent game, decent modes, fair, and then like go from there? And then you obviously have the online guys, they'll do their own thing. But I'm going to bring the discussion on to maybe something that we haven't really talked about before, but I'm going to talk about UFL and goals, right? And we can just keep it short. If you know, if you guys listening to the podcast, um, you know, don't want to listen about this, you know, we'll keep it short. But, uh, I mean, Shales, we'll start with you, because obviously there is a lot of talk about these two projects coming out. We don't know when they're mm-hmm. coming. We don't know when they're going to arrive. We've seen a couple of bits and pieces. Um, do you have any hope for these two games coming in? Or are you thinking that they're going to be, you know, kind of what they say, like online? I mean, we know they are both going to be online yeah. only initially, at, at least, yeah? So um yeah one of one of them was i think predominantly online if not a hundred percent online and that was the that was goals wasn't it that was the first one that 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 came about and they were Mm. saying you know their their pitch was basically they wanted a hundred percent fair esport didn't they so straight away that's probably me out or (laughs) me more out than in yeah only because that's just not really my bag is um but i don't know that so you know it might be it would have to kind of wait and see on that but i don't think that is a game that is suited for my demographic it's not i mean i guess it all depends on the investment you've got to put into it you know is it more on the side of 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 my club where it's you can you know everyone complains about it but you can get a competitive team relatively quickly which mm. is something which suits my my kind of gaming window that i don't get an awful lot of time to to game so you know i lap up this my club <laughs> stuff where it's like right you know <laughs> on 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 the first day i've 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 already got burkamp i can get messy and all this um so i don't know you know whether there's a nice balance there the problem, or... shares, that's the problem with you yeah You've well five iconic you know... moment versions i know yeah I didn't pay no 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 I didn't do that but um um but do you know what I mean it yeah it might it I can't rule myself out from it it mm. it doesn't sound like it it's it's going to be for me but you know I'm not I'm not hating on it I yeah. 
I, I welcome all these games coming up because mm. it's only going to be it's choice is great so it's it's i'm just glad that it's not just the same two guys you know competing for each other year after year it's you know how many times how many more years do we have to go through you know just having mm. fifa or 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 the konami football game to, yeah. to kind of pick and choose from so if they're all going to be this free to play model then even better i've not got a put any money in mm. initially so they're always going to be there to download and try so yeah if they're well supported over the years you know i think that's what we're seeing a lot of games you know these days that we're having you know e-football sounds like it's going to be one of them it's going to be um you know supported over the next three or four years or whatever we've seen games like um like rainbow six siege which has still been I think it's Rainbow Six Siege. I think it is. I mean that that that's been going for years. That that's still going. It's still getting it's still getting the support. Um, so it's going to be there on day one. It's going to be there in you know two three years time. So mm-hmm. you know much like eFootball. So I don't know. I'm 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 up for both of them coming out. So it's um, I'm not hating on them. So it's uh, just have to wait and see where we go for it. I'm obviously keen to see some actual gameplay. Yeah. Um, gameplay from them. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm sure they're both going to look great. It's kind of, it's a modern game. Um, I don't think they're going to look terrible, but let's just see how it's all kind of stitched together mm. and what the mechanics are and all that and kind of what their, I guess, what their kind of mode platforms are. Um, so exciting times. So I'm not just kind of, I. they sound like they're quite far away. We kind of want them to be here sooner than what they are, but then at the same time, we probably don't want to go through what we're currently going through at the moment with eFootball. We'd rather them come out, but you know, we can't, we don't know what their, yeah, what their the development right windows are, or what their release schedules are yet. So um, I'm up for it. Like I said. And what about you, Chris? For me, I, th- I think Shales nailed it immediately when he was talking about the fact that it is a, that they're online focused games and esports focused games and immediately for me that means that it's not a football game if it's an esport mm. it's not a football game because what esports players want is not compatible with what football is so esports players want a level playing field so that you might have players who some are better than others but whereas so offline players like me might you want to see mistakes now and then you want yeah. to see a pass go astray instead yeah. of mm-hmm. Passes being kind of laser guided, and you want to see referees making mistakes. I mean, I'm not someone who, if I was playing against the AI and the, the referee gave a penalty and I couldn't figure out why because it was a fair tackle or because it was barely any contact or whatever, I would be more pleased to see some humanity in the decision making than mm. I would be angry that I was cheated. And that esports is all about I don't want to be cheated. Yeah. I want everything to be, if I'm directing the ball at the goal, it has to go in the goal or yeah. it has to hit the target. Whereas my attitude is I'll aim it towards the goal, but if I'm under pressure, if there's a psychological element mm-hmm. that can be emulated in some way, that means that the shot goes, that's that's what I want to see. Mm. And esports players would say, that means you're taking away my control, yeah. Yeah. my skill. Two different directions, that's, isn't it? Exactly, that skill gap element of it. So yeah, it, it wouldn't be for me. Um, but I'm, I'm sure there will be guys who play online. I mean, the fact that Kurt is attached to it and is talking about how... I, I just find it really odd how all of these guys are so angry that Ultimate Team and that, that FIFA is this terrible experience where that they can't win. It's all just about they can't win. Sometimes I don't win a game and it makes me so mad. It's obviously against me. It's obviously weighted against us. There's obviously things in the code that mean that, oh, I forget what they call it, but where uh, the game favours one side over another and the ball just runs their way. And they put screenshots of games where they'll have 25 shots and the other team have two shots and win. And it's like, yeah, do you know what football is? Have you ever seen mm. stats at the end of a game? That's the beauty <clears throat> of football. Mm. In fact, I was listening to a, a football podcast the other day where they were talking about newspapers in Italy, uh, there was a particular result in Italy that was, I think, uh, it might have been involving Juventus, where they had all of the shots, the other team didn't, but the other team won, and all of the kind of analysis that was going into how did they solve this problem and what went wrong. And uh, his kind of analysis of it was, 
this is why we watch football mm. is for games like yeah. this where and you do happen. everything right you have all the possession you make those chances but either the defender always gets his toe to it last minute the goalkeeper just manages to keep them out has the game of his life and they have one shot and it just manages to sneak into the net that's mm. why football is the beautiful game yeah and esport isn't that it's it's almost the opposite of that it's almost whatever the result should be on paper has to be the result or otherwise it's somehow not fair so True. yeah it's it's two different directions and they're not showing very much at the moment so god knows when we'll see them god knows if they'll even come out it's it's mm. pipe dream stuff at the moment from yeah. what they've released but yeah I, I don't think it would be uh, it would be for me let's see man let's see so boys we're nearly talking for an hour so i won't keep you too much longer um but we are going to end on hopefully a slightly positive yet nostalgic uh ending to this podcast so i'm going to actually ask you first chris while you're on a roll there like we've talked a lot about e-football we've talked a lot about you know 25 years of pays and growing up playing the game and stuff like very briefly because we could talk about it for at least you know two or three hours just a, a podcast on you know the classic pays and our favorite moments we might actually do one of them in a couple of weeks time um if you guys are interested and in just have a general chat about classic pez but very briefly i mean like what was it about the older games for you that like if you had to sum it up you know like what was it about the older pez games that did it to you even though they were limited in scope they were limited in you know movement on the pitch they were limited in features they were li like compared to the standard now you know what i mean um and like i often compare it i was i was talking to my friend the other day and i was kind of you know, I was explaining to him that, like, you know, the difference between the Arkham games, like Arkham City, which came out years ago, to, like, Spider-Man, say. And it's like, yeah, you have the story in Arkham City, and you have, you know, it's Batman, and you have all this. But it's like, it'd be very hard to go back and play Arkham City when you have Spider-Man now, if you've not played both of them. You know, like, you, it'd be very hard to go back and play Arkham City after playing Spider-Man, because it's just so fluid and so pretty, and it's just a step up in technology. So, like, for the Pez games, like what like what was it about them for you like that that made you kind of that it just scratched that itch so to speak and like you know lit the fire for your passion for getting involved with pez in the first place well there are still a lot of people who when on eva where people talk about their current master league saves and things that they're still playing now and playing today <laughs> there are people who will come along every now and then and say you know well we can badmouth PES 2021 and eFootball and, and FIFA as much as we like, but you're not going to go back and play those games, mm. are you? And it's, it's like, yeah, a, a lot of us are. And I'm finding great joy in it because mm. for me, the things that I enjoyed most about it, I think there's two key areas, one of them being the grind. And starting out with that default Master League players, not being able to get results, <laughs> having to work really hard, keep the ball, be clever to have a sniff at goal, after you know a season almost getting relegated and not caring not wanting instant satisfaction from mm. something but yeah, being great. invested in the long term and going right okay where do we need where can we afford to invest because of course that was the other part of it that if you didn't go into the the settings on PES 5 and 6 and unlock sorry the shop the, the <laughs> WE shop winning 11 shop and unlock the higher amounts of credits that you could have for your team then you just you could afford two players a season if you were lucky <laughs> and that kind of grind and getting gradually better is something that i was just immediately addicted to rather than playing a game and immediately be winning and drawing and be up at the top end of the table yeah. for me that takes away all of the the joy from it and that's why i mean sometimes i've seen tweets lately saying oh those eva web dinosaurs i've, I've seen that a little bit Saying, oh, they're, they're just not uh, interested in anything that's coming in the future. That was Shales, I'd say. His burner. <laughs> that sounds like something. I think he'd do. If, any, if, any hint, if anyone's going to be saying anything like that, it's not going to be Shales doing his <laughs> fantastic retro content. But um, yeah, when, when I hear things like that, I think back to when Ultimate Team started and when you had a bronze level team yeah. and you were playing other bronze level teams, yeah. playing with players you've not heard of who can barely kick a ball and it was such a laugh yeah it's the same if i play fifa 22 now if i go and play with friends and we pick the worst teams because it, it's it is still all too laser guided and too assisted and, and not quite as it used to be but there is still an element of 
if you don't get the right chain of events in mm. place, you don't yeah. hit the right passes, and yeah. you don't shoot at the right moment, then you won't win, as opposed to there'll be another shot along in a minute. You know, the shots are like buses in this game. It just you, You'll have 20 shots a game, you'll score <laughs> half of them uh, if you're lucky. But um, yeah, that that for me, that grind element of it and really building something up was was what made me fall in love with it because you got to know the players, you got to know where the failures were. And when you identified them and made it better by investing wisely or training them up, it just got, it, you, you had that satisfaction of, I judge that perfectly. It makes you feel like a manager. And the other element to it for me was is the AI and how player attributes are kind of how the AI would make a player. You, you say at the time, oh my God, how is Shearer getting in those positions, getting his head on the ball just to, seems to be unstoppable. Yeah. And it, that that for me was, was such a, a draw. Mm. What, what going and watching match of the day or going and watching a, a live game and coming back and going, he is making those same runs He's having those same attacking patterns that that he would in real life, and that's something that, as games get more complicated, and instead of having eight directions, you've got three hundred and sixty mm. degree movement, you've mm. got bigger pictures, you've got AI that should be more advanced, but has to deal with so many variables. That for me, we're, we're getting away from that because even with the next gen consoles that we have, without either EA or Konami or some third party starting again from scratch and really taking advantage of the power that's there. I think we will just be stuck in this kind of this form that we're in at the moment where players can't really play like themselves without defenders having to just switch off and let them run past yeah. in order for them to, to score goals. So, so yeah, that, that's what made it special for me. And I still that's go back cool. and play PES 5 fairly regularly. I have yeah. a save on there with my badly edited Tramia team that I've put into <laughs> it. If anyone in the world has ever heard of Tramia outside of uh, this house. And um, yeah, I go back to it regularly and, and love it. And I love seeing Shale's content as well, seeing you know, how he's getting on with his winning 11 save. And it's all, it's still enthralling to watch it uh, yeah. more so than I, I'd say the modern games are even as beautiful as they are mm. as fantastic as the night's content is to look at I still think that the the core of the the emotion of it and the the attributes of the players really reflecting those play styles and how it just mirrors real life in certain mm. ways I think that was there in those older games and uh, yeah it's it's still magical to play magical to watch for me nice no shares no pressure that was a good answer you're up yeah no, it was good um you know, just going back from to going back to ISS on the on the on the PS one and all the way through to the you know up until PS six when that was kind of like you know that was the end of the PS two era for many people, but all of those titles they were like you know they were head and shoulders above the competitors mm. at, at, at those points, and you always felt like they were they were literally pushing the hardware to the maximum. It felt like they were you know like i said they were just they were just so good they were so deep even with you know going back to to kind of ps1s and it was even with the like chris said it's it's the attributes and how believable the attribute system was um coupled in with the with the freedom of the gameplay the edit mode it was you literally could um you know you could make those games whatever you wanted them mm. to be like with with just believable attributes, um, you know, up in them or down in them or whatever, creating just monster teams or whatever. And it was, it was just all of that and you know, all rolled into one. Like Chris said, it, it was the grind. It was how bloody frustrating the, the masterly default team was. And that, you know, you didn't have the option. you had to be them and everyone hated them. Like, you know, I don't care. Like everyone back then hated them. You might've grown to love them now, but, it was just, you know, getting those points to get your first signing in. It was like, right, I'm going to sign a, an attacking midfielder and all my players are going to go through him because he's the only one who can turn. He's the only one who can pass the ball more than five yards with power. You know, he's 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 the only one who can shoot. He's, he'll put the ball on Costolo's feet for a tap-in, but he was going to put it over the bar because the power bar is just going to could go to the maximum with the, you know, with the with the tiniest of touch. It was... It was kind of all of that. It was it was all of that struggle and just I don't know. It's just the, just those days of playing it. And I think as well, a lot of us, you know, us guys of, of of that age as well. I think we all see that era of football as well throughout those yeah. years of when when Pez was brilliant. 
I don't, I mean, personally for me, I can tie that to, I can say, you know, Arsenal, that was Arsenal's best days. In in in, in that run of, say, you know, Pez 2 up until Pez 6, it was that classic Arsenal team. Mm. So, you know, that, that, that was my team being, you know, one of the strongest teams on the game. Um, you know, so I, I can easily go back and play those games now. And they are, they are still frustrating now. Trust me, they are, you have people, you have just defenders who just don't pick someone up. There'll be a striker just left open, like in the middle of nowhere. And you think, well, what, what the hell is going on here? But it was kind of acceptable then. And, yeah. and to me playing it now, it's just acceptable now because it was, that's just how it was. Yeah, and no one, asked, no one, no one complained. It was just, you know, that's kind of what we had to deal with. But that was also kind of also the the strange charm of it. It was when you're playing your mates, you, my, my mates use the term, um, a custard goal, which is a custard is when there's a silly ricochet or someone just standing there or kind of not responding. It was, you know, that was, you know, you only score custards and things like that. You know, it, it was, <laughs> it was just, that whole, just that whole thing of, I don't know, just, just the whole area. It was the gameplay. It was the editing. It was the freedom you know they they were special games they yeah, still are special definitely. games um i don't think they it's strange i think you'd have had to have played them to go back now and play them for the first yeah, time I, yeah i agree I bet, I bet chris you still you, you might see people on evo who, who dip their head in and say i've played pez six you know it's, it's dreadful and all this how how did anyone play that and it's like i can fully understand that because you know, half the time you try and play a simple ball sideways and there's just this gravitation to play the ball forward <laughs> and you think, I just want to play a square pass, just, you know, but it has that kind of lock on that just sends the ball forward half the time. But, you know, um, I don't know, they were just they were just great, just, just, just great days. It was just that time in our lives, I think, when everything yeah. was, just, the was, just, was just fabulous. But like I said, we can always go back and play them. They're always going to be there. Mm -hmm. And thanks to the to the people who are still mod in the game you know we're, we're still seeing um pez 6 patches come out for, for for the new season there's there's been one just created um over the last couple of years i've been following like the um the modern community from like the from the south american scene they are still so dedicated to mm. modern the old even the ps1 games is even the the Pez 2013 3DS game still gets a still gets a yearly update. It's it's just mad, but it's so good to see how much this series meant to so many people that it's you know it still gets so much attention from everyone. It's still everyone's still investing their time into it, and mm. you know it's just it's just great that they're just not going anywhere. They're always going to be yeah, there, and um, that's the thing. And slow and, and kind of slowly they're getting better as well, which is mm. which is crazy. But, um, so. Yeah, it's it's just yeah. everything. They were they were they were top games. You know, a lot of them. They were always nine, ten out of ten games. Mm. Um, just you know, absolutely powerhouses back in the day. Yeah, they were so there, far there ahead, times, weren't they? You know, there there are times where I think about: Am I looking back at that era with rose tinted glasses? And because of the fact that, as you're saying, great times. You you're that age. It's part of your childhood. You you look back with fondness and think, oh, I wish I could get those days back when I could get all the friends around and mm. didn't have to worry about work commitments and could just have you know a week long Pez tournament if you wanted. Is is that the reason why I love them so much and why every game since then just feels a bit disappointing? But there are times where games just have a leap forward in some kind of gameplay dimension or some AI development. And it gives you a little a spark of that back. And that's where, so FIFA 22 just being released. I was in the uh, beta program for that and absolutely I thought it was just trash. Really, really was not a fan of it at all because of the way that defenders for online play purposes were just like mannequins and took plenty of videos to give back to the devs of, look, I'm running down the wing here to cross a ball in. The defenders will get back to a certain point, they'll be in a line in front of the goalkeeper and then strikers are just making runs back and forth to the goal and yeah. back again to the edge of the box while the other one does the opposite. And no one's tracking them because you'll get people screaming, AI defending, I didn't tackle that ball. I didn't move the defender there. So therefore, it's not me that's done it and it's got to be 1v1 or yeah, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But that final game has so much more of a kind of, it's been tuned for offline play 
and some of the physics that they've got in there are just wonderful. Playing Man City and being pressed to death and then playing uh, someone in League Two, someone like Trampier, <laughs> and uh, not being pressed at all and being able to run straight through them. And <laughs> seeing that AI difference... It, to me, it proves that we can be pleased. We're not just we're not dinosaurs, and we're not just in a swamp of toxic negativity who want to dislike everything. We can have a game given to us again that will give us those kind of sim elements and give us that investment that we want of starting with a poor team and having to grind and having lots of passes go astray. If someone out there makes that game, and you're talking about sliders and things before that can put that in. It can't fix it. It can make it a bit better. Mm. It's still FIFA at its core. It's still not really what guys like me want, but it's just a little reminder that actually we're not completely stuck in the past and don't want to move on. We just haven't been given that opportunity yet. And I really hope, considering the technology that we've got now, I mean, I remember writing letters to, to Konami 20 years ago and feeling like a complete pleb, sending letters and going... I love this game. It's the best. If you just added some real kind of Champions League structure, because it was the the wafer WEFA mm-hmm. championships and things back then. If you just added a real structure and some more real teams and go down a few tiers in England, so I can start off with my beloved Tramia, it'd be the best thing ever. And yeah, you know, but I remember thinking, what will this game look like in ten years' time? Yeah. And here we are, twenty years later, and I'm still playing those games from, mm. from back then to get yeah. that kind of grind and get that satisfaction out of it so we we can be pleased it can be done uh we, we just haven't been given that game yet yeah man well lads that's a good way to end it i think i mean it's been a good chat as usual and we're just about an hour and 11 in so yeah i mean there's always as shale said like the games are always there you know to go back and play and I think that's like for me it, again it's the same as you guys were saying just to end this out like it is I think it was that moment in time of like it was that you know you were that age you were you know at that stage in your life like there was there wasn't as many games like you know craving your attention there was no online it was literally just you know Pez 4, 5 and 6 were like best years of my life gaming wise you know because it was like Master League was just it like you know like it was frustrating but you all had different stories you had different legends like that you made with your team it was just a special time I think and I think you know people that haven't ever experienced that fresh it'd be kind of like going back watching Friends like when Friends was on TV like I don't know do you guys like Friends but if not I'm just gonna block you but I love Friends like I thought it was like amazing um as like one of my favorite shows because like I kind of grew up with that as it was like you know like ending um and like I think it would be very hard to go back and watch it now yeah like it's still it was just like of its time you know it was like in a little bubble um I think the Pez games were the very same as that or you know insert something whatever you liked instead of friends you know let's just say like Batman the animated series was another one for me as a kid like it was that time that moment you know and they were just special like and I just think they were so critically acclaimed as well that you can go back and play them now but I do agree with you like you have to you know you had to have played them I think back then to get the real specialness of them that it was like yeah that looks terrible like look at the state of this it's like you're you know using the d-pad to turn like rather than like you know 360 and it's like oh my god what is this but yeah I mean it was just a special time I think we'll always have those memories that's the that's the big thing but um yeah boys I mean I'm gonna end it there uh thanks for joining me I think we had a good old chat uh we're all still friends at the end of it i hope is uh that's the main thing but um yeah i mean thanks for coming on lads i appreciate you taking the time to come on um hopefully we get this out uh probably yeah i mean next week maybe monday so um a couple of days from now so yeah if you do have any feedback or any you know you want to go at any of the boys feel free to you know go at their twitters or into evil web and start slagging them um but yeah i mean that's that's it lads that's it for me um boys i'm not too sure if you want to say good luck but yeah that was a fun chat um so chris uh shales thanks a million lads and we will end it there